Hi, this is Kevin with Nursing Camp, and this is what you should know about lumbar puncture spinal taps. And this is my Nursing 7, where I cover the seven most important things about this condition and this procedure called lumbar puncture. So let's get into it, neuroassessment. Um, why is it a neuroassessment? Well, the main reason about lumbar puncture is underlying causes. And when a person does a lumbar puncture, we usually question something neurological is wrong with this person. And it's usually a presentation of either Guillain Barre, meningitis, or signs and symptoms of neurological changes. And why is that? Well, the spinal cord is responsible for the neurological structure and the, the pathways of neuro impulses. So let's get into uh, spinal tap. From my study sheet found at nursingcamp.com, and what we're going to cover first is the causes. Acute or chronic, why? And that's called some gems. And some gems are all the reasons why a person would get a lumbar puncture. So let's get into the causes. So S stands for seizures, and if a patient has unexplained seizures, we're going we're gonna to try to figure out um, what's the underlying cause of that. Uh, unexplained uh, or just meningitis, we're, we're questioning meningitis, we're going to look for that. Uh, Guillain-Barre, in a previous lecture I talked about Guillain-Barre, when you have ground to brain, so GB, Guillain-Barre, there's paralyzation of the lower extremities, bilateral. And a lot of times, well, to evaluate, is this a Guillain-Barre, we'll do a spinal tap for that. Encephalitis and multiple sclerosis. So all neurological conditions when we're looking at why a person would get a spinal tap. So before you start, what do you do? Well, we assess baseline vital signs, so we check vital signs to make sure they're okay. They also check for mentation, so level of consciousness is important. Anybody with a GCS of less than 8 should, should uh, be cautioned as far as getting a, a lumbar puncture. Also, can a person sit still during the lumbar puncture? That's also important. So they might need some sort of sedation or something like that. Um, also, we will monitor their coagulations, like their PT or PTT. Um, heparin, INR. If they're on Coumadin or heparin or Eliquis or any kind of blood thinners, we're going to hold that. And general rule of thumb is there's four parts, uh, four hours you hold heparin prior to uh, any kind of invasive procedure or spinal tap because you're going to be puncturing a hole in the spine and you want that to clot. And you don't want them bleeding out of that because spinal fluid is sterile. And the risk is is that we don't want to have infiltrates going into the uh, into the spinal cord. So uh, we'll assess these labs uh, prior to it. Um, now, what about their positioning and what what goes on? So generally, what happens with the person's positioning is is that we're going to place that person on a sideline position, and we're going to enter into either L3 and L4 or 4 and 5. And that's between the lumbar areas. Now that's MD decision, my decision. This patient will be in the, the head flex position in a fetal position. And so that allows for that vertebrae to really open up. So what is the nurse's procedure during this to maintain that patient from staying still? So during that procedure, they're gonna stay still, they're gonna assess their level of consciousness during it, they're gonna maintain the sterile field as they do it. So post-procedure, we're going to monitor them bed rest for about four hours, and we're going to not give them any NSAIDs, no Motrin, anything like that, or anticoagulants, up to 48 hours. And the reason is that we really want them to have form a clot here. They'll have an occlusive dressing on there, which we're going to monitor. And also the thing, too, is, is that they're going to, they might even get some laxatives. And the laxatives are so that they don't pop a clot or have any problems with the... Uh, with the clotting factors. You're going to educate that patient not to lift any heavy objects because the same thing on the pressure and you don't want them to basically push that clot out and then they spill out you know, uh, spinal fluid and that would be acute, definitely. <laughs> All right, so, so what are some other things that you're going to monitor post um, uh, procedure? Well, the main thing that you're going to look at is their dressing. So there's some specific things about the dressings that you're going to do is you're going to monitor that dressing for um, for any drainage. So any wet dressings, especially in the NCLEX, should always be tested for glucose because glucose is the main part of you know, spinal fluid. Spinal fluid is glucose. And so when a patient has a, a wet dressing, um, 
you think uh, leaking uh, spinal fluid. Also, the thing too is is that um, you monitor that dressing for Q1 hours times four, and then uh, then eight hours for 24 hours. And that's a pretty long time that this is occlusive. So this is occlusive. So um, you're going to not have them do any showers. So they're going to be bath, bathing, and such like that. Remember, they're going to be um, bed rest uh, for up to four hours, but always follow your, your nursing policy. So the interesting thing about uh, dressings and spinal taps is that uh, they get this halo, where they get this kind of uh, cerebral spinal fluid that goes on the outside, and then the red is on the inside. And that's called a halo on your dressing. Anytime you see that, you think uh, spilling spinal fluid. So that would be an acute finding. And the final thing we want to look at is, is what kind of patients are these patients? You know, any patient that presents into the emergency department or with a questionable meningitis or Guillain Barre or anything like that, um, so anybody can get a spinal tap, but it is an acute thing. So they have to be presenting with some sort of neurological underlying because we're going to try to evaluate it. And so uh, will we put them on a monitor? No. Uh, we'll do baseline vital signs. Uh, we're going to be assessing the spinal fluid. Uh, positioning will be uh, supine. Um, during the procedure, they'll be side lying in the fetal position with the neck flex. Um, IV fluids, you will push IV fluids post spinal fluid uh, because you removed the spinal fluid and you don't want that patient because they can revascularize their spinal fluid. And the Q3, well, the Q3 would be decrease of uh, uh, a wet dressing, you know, a, a signs and symptoms of post complications of uh, spinal tap is meningitis. So if they have signs and symptoms of meningitis, which is a nuchal rigidity, which is neck um, pain, or their legs going up, and that's called Babinski reflex, and that means that there's a meningeal irritation going on. Also signs of meningitis. Now, if you just went into the spinal tap, and then you have uh, infiltrated, and there's an infection, um, that could show up as this. And so that's an acute three. That's definitely something you would call the doctor about. Any kind of head pressure or anything like that, uh, that's out of the ordinary for post uh, a spinal tap. Labs you're going to monitor for infection, um, platelets, you wouldn't send them down if the platelets were low, uh, less than 60 or 80 following policy. Um, coags you'd monitor before, uh, fluid stats you definitely maintain, don't MPO them. Uh, pulse is okay, uh, pulse might be increased if they are having complications. Um, BP okay, blood pressure okay, pulse X okay, uh, no cardiac. Um, no ABGs, uh, mentation changes with a post-spinal tap because of meningitis, no heart, no lungs, no kidneys, um, this, they'll generally be uh, discharged um, after, after they and be sent home, um, but a lot of times these are patients that are in the ICU and CCU that are getting a spinal tap. All right, my name is Camp and this is Nursing Camp and uh, this was my video on spinal tap and the indications and monitoring of it. From my study sheet found on nursingcamp.com, you can follow me on Nursing Camp, social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. We'll see you then. See you next time.